Let's talk about how a firm manages its inventory. Now, inventory management is critical to a business for a number of reasons. First, inventory makes up a large percentage of many firms' assets. Also, there's a cost to having too much inventory as well as a cost to having not enough inventory. If you happen to um, be listening to the radio, sometimes you'll hear uh, car dealerships talking about how they have too many cars on the lot and they really want to move them off. Why do they want to do that? They want to do that because carrying that inventory is expensive. Uh, if they have a hundred cars on the lot, or a hundred more than they'd like to have, and the average car costs 20000 that's $2 million in inventory. That's, it's not free to keep those cars on the lot. On the other hand, not having enough inventory is a problem. If you've ever been to the store and they've been sold out of the item you were looking for, it's very frustrating. You may go to another store, and in fact, if this store tends to be not well stocked most of the time, you may stop shopping there altogether. So it's really important for a company to maintain a good inventory management policy. So what's our goal here? Our goal is to optimize the trade-off between too, carrying too much inventory and not carrying enough inventory. And how do we do that? Well, let's talk about what inventory is. Well, inventory is different depending on what kind of firm you have. If you're a manufacturing firm, you're oftentimes talking about several forms of inventory. There's the raw material, the stuff you use to produce your goods. So it may be steel, it may be uh, plastics or rubber, if you happen to be in the auto, um, auto manufacturing business, so tires are raw material uh, for an auto company, for Ford. On the other hand, if you happen to be a company that makes tires, then the rubber is the raw material. So you have to keep in mind that we have these, these different types of inventory. Okay, you have work in progress, so you can, have, you can have something that's partially put together, but it's not fully put together. You order a computer online, they're building it for you. What happens? Well, they may have put in some of the pieces, but they may not have finished. They may be waiting for a part, or they may just not have finished assembling the computer. That's a work in progress. And then you get the finished good, the computer that's all put together that they're going to ship to you. Keep in mind that one firm's raw material is another firm's finished good, okay? As I, as I mentioned before, for Ford, a tire happens to be a raw material. But for a company like Bridgestone, a tire happens to be a, a finished good. So it depends on which side of the coin you happen to be on. And so let's keep, let's take a little deeper look into inventory here. Okay, inventory has significant costs. And one of the costs we refer to is what we call carrying costs, the cost of carrying the inventory, which can be 20 to 40% of the inventory value. Um, what makes up carrying costs? Storage and tracking. Okay, you have to store these goods. You have to know where they are. All right, even if they're sitting on a shelf, you have to know which piece is sitting on which shelf? All right, you have to have a warehouse. You have to insure these, this product, okay? Your, your uh, warehouse could burn down, okay? They could, there could be vandalism, <clears throat> anything could happen, okay? Losses due to obsolescence, okay? This is something that happens when you talk about computers, okay? Computers become outdated very, very quickly. So you buy too many, too many uh, Intel processors and a new processor comes out, okay? The old one's obsolete. So you don't want to hold too many of those. And of course, there's also an opportunity cost of holding the inventory. You could use your money for something else. There's also a, a problem with shortage costs, okay? 
there's a cost to restocking, okay, to buying more inventory. And as I mentioned before, if you don't have enough inventory, you may lose customers. So when you're managing inventory, when a company's managing inventory, lots of times they need to look at each different item to decide how much they should carry and how much they shouldn't or how how little they should carry okay you might want to have larger quantities of items that have substantial shortage costs that is if you run out of these things the business is in real trouble all right there are some things where look if we don't have that item today that's okay we can make do without it but uh, if you happen to be a bagel shop and you run out of flour so you can't make any bagels that's a big problem all right uh, there are other things that are not as big a problem where if you oh if you run out of uh, you know sesame seeds and you can't make sesame bagels today well that's a problem but you know what the person there will probably switch and buy some other kind of bagel um, you may want to maintain smaller quantities of expensive items Okay, if you have very, very expensive items, keeping them on the shelves may be very costly. And you want to maintain, you may want to maintain a supply of less expensive basic materials. So if things aren't very expensive, you may want to keep a substantial supply of those sort of things. So here's a little graph that, that illustrates the idea. What we have here is we have carrying cost. Okay. That is the cost of holding the inventory, storage cost, insurance, etc. Then there's a restocking cost. And what do we notice here? If you look at this, this graph here, you can see that carrying cost has an upward slope. Okay? The more inventory you have, the greater the carrying cost. That makes sense. Right? The more cars that the, the car dealership has on the lot, the more expensive it is you can see that restocking costs has a downward slope. That is, the smaller the amount of inventory you hold, the greater the restocking costs. The more often you're going to have to call your supplier and buy more of these things. And then we've got this third curve here, total cost of holding inventory. And you'll notice that the, the lowest point on the total cost is right here where these two things intersect, where the carrying cost and the restocking cost intersect. Now think about it. Okay, we could actually just ignore this. It looks almost like a supply and demand curve from your basic microeconomics class. We could ignore this total cost of holding inventory and think about what happens if restocking costs go up. That is, it shifts out here to the right. Well, then you're going to want to hold more inventory. If carrying costs go up, that would shift back into the left, you'd want to hold less inventory. The optimal inventory is where these two are equal. So there's a nice little model that's commonly used called the EOQ model or the economic order quantity model, which shows a company how much inventory they should hold. And let's just go through the notation here. Q is the inventory quantity in each order. So the average inventory is Q over 2. T is the firm's total unit sales per year. So T over Q is the number of orders per year. So for example, if, if, um, if a firm sells a million total units of a good, and their average and their inventory quantity in each order happens to be a thousand, then they'd have a thousand orders. Okay, okay or let's say the the inventory was a hundred uh, thousand, then they'd have ten orders per year. Okay. CC is the inventory carrying cost per unit. Okay, so that includes things like storage costs and insurance, and then there's a fixed cost per order. So what's the total carrying cost? The total carrying cost is the average inventory, Q over 2, times the carrying cost per unit, 
cc. Total restocking cost equals the fixed cost per order times the number of orders. So remember the number of orders is T over Q. So the total cost is going to be the total carrying cost plus the restocking cost. Okay, these two numbers, Q2, uh, Q over 2 is again average inventory, CC is carrying cost, so this part makes up the total carrying cost and this part makes up the restocking cost. Well, what do you want to do? We saw that from the graph, the optimal inventory was where carrying cost equals restocking cost. So you just set these two, these two equal to each other, and if you do a little bit of algebra, you can get Q squared multiply this um, Q in the denominator, it's Q star in the denominator um, to both sides, and then you'll get Q, uh, Q star squared, and divide both sides by, multiply both sides by 2 to get this 2 out of the denominator, and then divide both sides by CC. So if you do that, you'll get this, you take the square root of this, this is the EOQ equation. So the optimal quantity is 2 times TF divided by CC. So let's take a quick look at a numerical example. If you happen to have a company that has uh, an inventory item that has a carrying cost of $1.50 per unit, the fixed, cost, fixed order cost is $50 per order, and the firm sells 100,000 units per year, we can just plug into that equation and we can see that they should hold 2,582 units in inventory. That's the optimal quantity for the inventory.